Well, the UK biobank studies, the idea is you gather all the data you can about people and say, what are the things that influence uh, diseases, cancer, heart disease, whatever. And, and they're doing genetic studies as well, um, which, which, which does run into problems. But in general, the general concept's okay, I think. So they looked at cardiovascular disease and they said, well, what, what's associated with cardiovascular disease? What can we find? Well, they couldn't find any genetic markers, by the way. That's a hidden away thing. There was nothing specific, all right? What they, what they looked at and they found that, well, diabetes was associated with like a 3.5 increase risk and smoking was 2.7. I, I, these figures are off the top of my head. Very high blood pressure, 1.8 times risk. And they looked at per one millimole per liter increase in cholesterol levels was associated with an increased risk of 0 0.98, which to you and me is one, and one is average, all right? In other words, there was no association and this is looking at, I think it was 500,000 people in one part of the study and 5 million in the other part of the study. No association could be found at all, at all. But if you read the paper, the, the figures are there. There's no comment on this anywhere in the paper. It's quite amusing. It's almost like, better keep quiet about this bit. Because there was another study done in the UK looking at risk factors where they got all the information from 400,000, nearly 500,000 people from GP records and they said, let's have a look at what's associated with, with dying of, of cardiovascular disease. And there were 48 factors identified, some of which were, were slightly weird things like, like your, your liver enzyme levels and whatever, but these are just things that GPs measure. And out of the 48 factors, coming in at number 46, with an increased risk of 0 0.001 was your LDL level, because they measured LDL. In other words, there was no increased risk at all with an increased level of LDL in this study. Professor Karl Popper, uh, logic and science uh, man, came out with some genius stuff on, on the nature of proof. And the asymmetry of proof is, is what he came out with. And it's stunning and it's so important. I'll, I'll just describe it briefly again. There's an asymmetry in proof. And the asymmetry or the lack of balance is that you can have many, many positive bits of evidence supporting a hypothesis, and they never prove it, right? You can have massive evidence of white swans being the only swans, but one black swan turns up and the hypothesis is over that there are only white swans, even though you had myriad proofs because you went to Venezuela and you went to Botswana and you went everywhere and you kept finding, yes, all the swans are white. It never proves it. The asymmetry is that if you find one negative proof against the hypothesis, it's over. There is no debate or discussion. It's over. Now, you might rewrite the hypothesis, change it to accommodate, but it's over. But as you're saying, it's not one or two negative proofs against the cholesterol hypothesis where you could change the hypothesis a little to accommodate them. You know, that could be valid if you're honest, but it's not one or two. It's everywhere you turn, everywhere you turn. In, in biophysics, if you look at correlations, if you look at epidemiology and framing them and all those, you look at the machine learning, uh, advanced studies, like you mentioned there with the 500,000 people and it pulls out what's relevant. 